These are the Nike LeBron 22s, and we actually are going to take a deep dive on the design, the tech specs, the packaging, all that fun stuff in the form of a hands-on. Unfortunately, the resale platform I decided to get these from delayed the entire process. They sat on these as they were verified already. I just didn't get them until literally today. Um, so we're just gonna do a little bit of a hands-on. Uh, bef before we get into the actual video, if you can like, subscribe, and comment, any engagement at all helps the video to get exposure, helps the channel to grow, and I will be eternally grateful for everything that you all continue to do and all the support you continue to give. But without further ado, let's get into this hands-on. All right, starting with the packaging, as we always do, um, we have a return to the slide-out drawer box from the LeBron series. Uh, so on the very top, you have the kind of like diamond LeBron logo, crown logo. This one is called the crown jewel. So you have a crowned diamond. Um, you also have a lot of like geometric patterns all over the box in a glossy kind of print all over. Um, you actually have the um, geometric patterns with the crown logo kind of all over the place. Um, and then you have the LeBron logo kind of embossed everywhere as well. Um, but this geometric pattern kind of resembles a, um, like a snowflake, but obviously that's not what it's supposed to be. Um, it looks to be more like, again, just uh, the geometric, geometric shape of like a jewel or a diamond or something like that. Um, in general, it is an upscale presentation as they usually are for the LeBron series. We had the 21 that kind of was resembling the oyster shell um, and then the pearl inside the oyster shell was the shoes. Now from design perspective, you have a shoe that is reminiscent of the 20 and 21s but is very, very different from the 20 and 21s, if that makes any sense. It is a low cut shoe once again. Um, it does have big swooping lines, something that uh, we haven't seen in the LeBrons in quite some time. We saw LeBrons that in the past that were just big and bulky shoes now. Um, they kind of stripped away all of that, especially with the 20, um, and they've added on those things little by little with every in, uh, iteration. So the 22 features this gigantic uh, lateral side swoosh. Um, this is integrated into the upper. So you have this lateral side swoosh with like piping, like a neon green piping um, that is actually flowing to the other side, to the medial side. But you also have the stitching, which is like an embellishment of the LeBron signature on the heel counter area. Uh, but overall, I think it is a nice looking, a nice touch. I think the design itself will definitely be um, very divisive. I think uh, if you are a minimalist type of person, you like minimalist design, this is not gonna be it, but from a design perspective, for me personally, I do really like this design. I do like what they did with this shoe. Uh, but again, you have this gigantic lateral side swoosh that's integrated into the upper that goes all the way around to the medial side. You have this foot saddle that is intended for obviously uh, containment for the foot, keeps your foot in place, but then you have this jewel swoosh um, that is built into there. You do have some stitching that looks I mean, legit stitching that kind of keeps the shoe stitched onto the actual upper of the shoe. Um, you do have a nice sized outrigger on the forefoot area. I'll try to get that in some B-roll, but you have this outrigger on the forefoot area that's obviously intended for foot containment and things like that, lateral containment um, and stability and all that fun stuff. Moving over to the medial side, you have again that double line head. Um, that you saw on the box as well, but it is, uh, I'm not really sure what that's intended to mean, um, other than the fact that, uh, you know, it's King James and the line has kind of been the uh, his go-to. Um, you do have this like hot punch laces that are um, the default with this particular colorway. And then you have some metal lace holes that are obviously a little bit on more on the premium side, I guess, because there isn't much premium on the shoe. You know, we're gonna get into the materials in just a moment, but, um, Again, some more design perspectives. You have this like a jewel uh, cover on the Roman numeral and actual numeral 22. So on the tongue area, you have that jewel. And then on the reverse of the tongue, they are bringing back the quilted uh, tongue, which was a nice premium touch. It is reminiscent of the Amamanir uh, line for the Jordan series. You do have the sphere technology making its comeback uh, for the sock liner of the shoe. It's intended to kind of uh, provide more cushioning comfort, cooling, and all that fun stuff for your foot. And then on the insole, I'm not sure if this is glued in or not. Yeah, it's not glued in, doesn't look to be much. Um, but you have the uh, insole, which looks to be like a grind material. If, I mean, if I'm correct in that, it does look like the grind material that you'll f find on Nike outsoles. But then you have uh, stitched into the insole the um, double-headed line, again, uh, with the Roman numeral 22 
below that. But overall, really, really nice looking design. Very, um, I guess, futuristic looking. I'm, I'm a big fan of that kind of thing. Um, and then one last little thing is you have the little mini swoosh on the medial side toe box. And then on the outsole, um, you have those ge geometric patterns. Um, you have tread, you know, tread patterns that kind of go all over the place. So in theory, they should perform very, very well on the court. We'll find out soon enough, but they should, for all intents and purposes, perform very, very well. You have the LeBron crown logo under the forefoot and under the heel. Um, and then on the heel counter area, heel tab, you have established in 1984, his year of birth, LeBron's. And then on the other shoe, you have um, Akron, Ohio, his place of birth. So overall, very, very clean design, um, in my opinion. I think a lot of people think it's a little bit on the loud side, but overall, I think I am a big fan of this, of this design. Now, in terms of the materials, um, I think we took a little bit of a step down. The LeBron 21 featured premium leather uppers and all that fun stuff. And I was a big fan of that design and those material choices. Some of them came with those iridescent uppers. Some came with premium leather uppers, um, but overall it was a premium shoe. It came in at $200 retail US. These are actually coming in retail at $180 US. So obviously uh, they're gonna make some compromises in certain places. The box, the packaging experience, they did not compromise and it is a premium packaging experience. The upper for this, it is said on the tongue area that this is a uh, synthetic leather upper. Um, and it says it clearly on Nike's website as well. They're not trying to pull any punches. It is a synthetic leather upper. So it does look like perforated leather, but it is synthetic leather. You have a kind of like a microfiber type of material on the tongue. Very, um, very cheap feeling. I don't, I'm just gonna you know, say it as it is. It feels pretty cheap. It doesn't feel like anything premium at $180. Um, $10 more than the LeBron Next Gen Amped, which is kind of crazy. But overall, I think the material choices are fine. Um, $180, I, I would expect some premium materials. I think a lot of the budget or marketing, or whatever, went probably to the packaging. And then they kind of had to cut corners or maybe, or uh, make some compromises in other places. But in general, materials are fine. Um, they do feel relatively light. They don't feel particularly heavy, and I think that's obviously the intent. Now, we can't talk about the materials without talking about how the materials affect the weight. Um, from a materials perspective, we talked about how Nike went with synthetic, uh, a synthetic upper. Nike explicitly says on their website that the Nike LeBron 22 features a synthetic leather upper, so this nice looking perforated upper is all synthetics. But I think that's a twofold kind of thing. One is to reduce price. Obviously, it went from $200 uh, retail US to $180 US. But I think the other part of it is actually weight reduction. If you're going with genuine leathers and things like that, you're probably going to be adding weight as a result. When you go with these synthetic uppers and synthetic leathers, you're probably going to reduce weight quite a bit. So the LeBron 22 comes in weighing in a size 12, 17.2 ounces or 488 grams, which puts it pretty average with a lot of the other shoes I've tested all year long. Um, so it's not obviously the lightest shoe I've tested. It's not the heaviest shoe. Um, when you pull these out of, outside of the packaging, you're noticing immediately how light the shoe is. They actually feel lighter than what they really are. Um, so we'll see how they actually perform on the court, but I think weight shouldn't be an issue and they're pretty well distributed overall. Now, from an initial try on perspective, they fit pretty well. I think um, just from the initial try on, you should be able to go true to size. So for me, I went with my true size 12. They fit pretty perfectly. Um, there was no hot spots or anything like that. So getting them on the court, shouldn't have any issues with the fit or anything like that. I don't think I should have any issues with the heel slip. Now, one thing I do wanna note is that it features the same technology as the LeBron 21 in terms of the collar of the shoe and the sock liner, which is that sphere technology. When I posted that video, a lot of uh, commenters, a lot of um, viewers kind of commented on how the fit was around the collar of the shoe. Some people were actually complaining that the collar of the shoe dug into their ankles, uh, causing them to bleed and things like that. So um, that's something you wanna keep in mind is that if you had that issue with the LeBron 21, you might have that issue again with the LeBron 22, just because it features that same technology as the 20 and 21. Um, if you're obviously able to try these on in store, obviously do that. If that is an issue, but you wanna play in this shoe, I'd recommend wearing uh, obviously higher socks, like crew socks or something like that. 
um, or some kind of um, material to kind of keep your ankles protected. Um, but if you had that issue with the 21s, you're probably gonna have that issue once again with the 22s. But that will just about do it for this video. If there's anything you wanna know about the LeBron uh, 22 from the hands-on perspective, please leave a comment. Um, keep in mind that the performance review should be coming out sometime next week after I put in some work with these shoes and really get an idea of how these shoes perform on the court. Um, but if you like this video, like it. If you didn't like it, dislike it. But if you really, really liked it, please hit that subscribe button. Thank you all for watching and you have a great day. Thank you.